Okay, moving on to a case study. This is an example of money laundering utilizing MSBs from Fintrax Money Laundering Typologies and Trends for Canadian MSBs. Uh, Fintrack is Canada's money intelligence unit. Okay. Two individuals were suspected of running a mass marketing fraud MMF scheme. The perpetrators used MSBs to receive payments from fraud victims in the United States. Counterfeit checks were sent to U.S. residents who were then instructed to send a portion of these funds back to individuals perpetrating the fraud. One of the individuals who appeared to link two identities and various addresses was the beneficiary of most of the electric funds transfers sent through the, th sent through the MSBs. He or she regularly received EFTs from U.S.-based fraud victims over a short period of time because nearly all of the EFT amounts were below mandatory thresholds, so they were probably under the 10,000 K mark. It is possible that many more ETFs were sent to the suspected fraud perpetrator before suspicious suspicions were triggered regarding financial activity over the course of a year in excess of three dozen suspicious transaction reports. STRs were filed over on these on this individual. Okay. The other individual shared the same residential address with the first suspect. Although the address was apparently never used when receiving the EFTs, he or she was thought to be the mastermind of the scheme because this individual had been convicted of a large number of fraud-related offenses. Because this individual, article, the individual had been flagged in reports sent to the government for the, a series of multiple cash deposits and in relation to depositing MSB-issued checks, the same individual also received Euro-denomination EFTs from Europe. Okay, so it's a pretty sophisticated stab here. The main EFT receipt, who used two identities and eight addresses, appeared to be using multiple MSB agents, close to 20 locations, in an attempt to conceal the fraudulent activity. Funds were paid out in checks issued by the MSB. STR filed by banks indicate that this individual made a series of deposits into two different bank accounts using cash and checks. Okay. The biggest misconception about the MSB industry is that there is minimal oversight. In fact, many MSBs are overseen by a variety or national and or local regulators and often maintain compliant AML programs. In addition, they are monitored by the banks that they maintain relationships with. However, the scrutiny to which MSBs are subject can vary greatly, in large part due to the ease with which some MSBs can set up businesses. Additionally, some MSBs are small, i.e. one-store operators, and many may not have robust AML programs. They do have to have some AML program now, uh, and the ones, the large ones, have like ones comparable to banks, compared with their la larger national counterparts. This is why one of the most important aspects of due diligence for a bank when establishing a relationship with an MSB is to confirm that the MSB has implemented a sufficient AML program, e.g. procedures, training, suspicious activity monitoring, and is properly licensed and or registered in the jurisdiction it operates in. Okay, moving on, insurance companies. The insurance industry provides risk transfer, saving investment products to a variety of consumers worldwide, ranging from individuals to large corporations to governments. An important aspect of the way the insurance industry operates is that most of the agents conducted by insurance companies is transacted through intermediaries such as agents or independent brokers, insurers, and with some exceptions are subject to AML requirements. One susceptibility of the insurance industry to money laundering is not as high in comparison to other types of financial institutions. For example, policies and prop for property, casualty, title, or health insurance typically do not offer investment features. Cash buildups, the option of transferring funds from one to another or other means of hiding or moving money. That said, certain sectors of the insurance industry such as life insurance and annuities are a primary target for criminals engaging in money laundering and or terrorism financing. In a number of ways, the sector vulner sector's vulnerability to money laundering is similar to that of security sector. In some jurisdictions, life insurance policies are even viewed as investment vehicles similar to securities. Uh, Yet yeah, that is true. According to the FATF and in 2004-2005 typologies report across the whole insurance sector, life insurance appears to be by far the most attractive area to money launderers. Substantial sums can be invested in widely available life insurance products and many feature a high degree of flexibility. Well, because insurance was coming in, you know, these life insurance policies, they were definitely all coming in and, and they, were, they were getting, you know, insurance went through like a boom in the 80s and 90s. I know it's hard to think of it now, but everyone was just selling insurance. You know, you're just trying to get products out. So this is part of that. 
Um, many life insurance policies are structured to pay a fixed dollar amount upon death of the insured party, whereas other life insurance products, such as the whole or permanent life insurance, have an investment value, which can create a cash value above the original investment. If it is cancelled by a policyholder, such characteristics, while of considerable value to be an honest policyholder, also offer money laundering various opportunities to legitimise their ill-gotten gains. So it's just another way of layering it, no questions asked. So you know you're gonna like basically put the money in, get a check back. Um, furthermore, the most frequently observed individual typology relates to international transactions, which is evident over the cross-border reach of insurance-related money laundering operations. Okay, so it's cross-border as well. There are two things there. For criminals looking to launder funds, life insurance products with no cash surrender value are the least attractive. Those that feature payments of cash surrender value and the opportunity to nominate beneficiaries from the first day of the policy are the most attractive. Annuities, another type of insurance policy with cash value. An annuity is an investment that provides a defined series of payments in the future in exchange for an upfront sum of money. Annuity contracts may allow criminals to exchange illicit funds for an immediate or deferred income stream, which usually arrives in the form of monthly payments starting on a special specified day. In, most, in both cases, a policyholder can place large sum of money into a policy with the expectation that it will grow based on the underlying investment, which can be fixed or variable. One indicator of possible money laundering is when the potential policyholder is more interested in the policy's cancellation term than its benefits. Vulnerabilities in the insurance sector include the following. A lack of oversight, controls over intermediaries, insurance brokers have a great deal of control and freedom regarding policies. Decentralized oversight over aspects uh, of the sales force. Insurance companies may have employees, i.e. agents, who are subject to a full control of insurance company. Non-captive agents offer an insurance company product, but are not employed by the insurance company, so they're basically third parties. They often work in several insurance companies and find the best mix of products for their clients and may fall between the cracks of multiple insurance companies. Some may have to work to find a company with the weakest AML oversight if they're complicit in them with the money launderer. Okay. Sales driven objectives. So this is the same as like being a securities dealer basically in some respects. The focus of brokers is on selling the insurance products and thus they overlook signs of money laundering such as lack of explanation for wealth or unusual methods for paying insurance premiums. Below are some certain examples of how money can be laundered through the insurance industry. Certain insurance policies operate in the same manner as unit trusts or mutual funds. The customer can overfund the policy and move funds into and out of policy while paying early withdrawal penalties. When such funds are reimbursed by the insurance company by check, the launderer has successfully obscured the link between the crime and the generated funds. The purchase of a, and redemption of single premium insurance bonds are key laundering vehicles. The bonds can be purchased from insurance companies and then redeemed prior to their full term at a discount. In such cases, the balance between the bond is paid to a launderer in the form of a sanitized check from the insurance company. A free look period, this is a good one. A free look period is a feature that allows investors for a short period of time after the policy is signed and the premium paid to back out of the policy without penalty. This process allows for the money launderer to get an insurance check which represents cleaned funds, exactly, so it's layering. However, as more insurance companies are subject to AML program requirements, this type of money laundering is more readily detected and reported. Okay. One indicator of possible money laundering is when the potential policyholder is more interested in the cancellation terms of the policy rather than the benefits. So they're getting the policy and they're just talking all the time about how they can cancel it. You know what I mean? The launderer buys a policy with illicit money and then tells the insurance company that he has changed his mind and does not need the policy. After paying a penalty, the launderer redeems the policy and receives a clean check from the respected insurer. 2004-2005 Money Laundering Typologies Report provides additional typologies related to the insurance industry. Um, the funding of insurance policies by third parties, i.e. not the policyholder, who have not been subject to regular identification procedures. When the insurance contract was concluded, the source of funds and the relationship between the policyholder and the third party is unclear to the insurance company. The customer actually does not seek insurance coverage but an investment opportunity. Money laundering is enabled by using large sums of money to make substantial payments into life insurance single premium policies which serve as a wrapped investment policy. A variation on this is to use a large premium deposit used to fund annual premiums such as policies which are comparable to single premium policies and enable the customer to invest substantial amounts of money into the insurance company because the annual premiums are paid from an account that has to be funded with a total amount and apparently lower money laundering risk life products will bear the features of a higher risk single, single premium policy. 
In the insurance sector, most of the business is conducted through intermediaries. This also reduces risk. As a result, on most occasions, it is the intermediaries' application to the AML regulatory requirements that is unsatisfactory. So they don't care about the AML. When a company assesses laundering and terrorism financing risks, it must consider whether it permits customers to use cash or cash equivalents to purchase insurance products, purchase an insurance product with a single premium or lump sum payment, and borrow money against an insurance product's value. Okay, cool.